It's not a place you move to, it's a place you're born at. My name is uh, Judge Will Thompson. I'm the circuit court judge for Boone and Lincoln Counties of West Virginia. The biggest single problem we have right now is dealing with what's commonly referred to as the opioid crisis. I've been all over this country reporting on the opioid crisis, and honestly, this is the worst situation I've ever seen. It's a beautiful place, Boone County, tucked into the Appalachian Valleys of South Central West Virginia. The people I met talk about pride in being from here. They're church going, they're hard working, they've sent generation after generation deep into the coal mines and to cut timber. But as a lot of those jobs disappeared, folks moved away. A lot of people struggle to find work, and painkillers, heroin, meth took hold. This is not losing a generation, this is losing multi-generations. I've had, where I've had to place children with great-grandparents because both the parents and grandparents um, suffered from addiction. It's taken our soul. We've got the opiate pain reliever pills, we've got methamphetamine, we've got heroin. Uh, Roxycontin, oxy, hydros, anything really. Mallory Sutphin tried all sorts of pain pills chasing a high. I was a weekend warrior, as a lot of people say. It's something that I couldn't control. I didn't know how to control. I just knew that my body needed that pill and that feeling that it gave me to even go through the day. I used to be that person. Many people would see me come and it's just like, oh, well, there she comes. Carrie Dolan told us she started out on pain pills, switched to meth, and then heroin. You know, I was that needle junkie, or I was that thief, or look at her strung out. Rachel Waters, she tried coke, meth, and acid. Opiates is what ruined my life. By the time I was 19, 20, I was an addict already. It seems like we're almost ground zero for the opioid crisis. We're driving around with Chad Barker. He's chief deputy sheriff in Boone County. We have a large, or a big problem with property thefts. Stealing equipment, you know, uh, chainsaws, weed eaters, lawn equipment, uh, breaking into homes, you know, all that to supply their drug addiction. They pay for it by stealing. They pay for that by selling themselves. Uh, they pay for that by dealing themselves. Uh, there is some child se sex trafficking uh, where we're having parents uh, use their daughters, where they'll use them to trade their for pills, uh, for heroin, for whatever it might be. How much of the population do you think is actively using drugs? Mm, I would estimate more than 10%, less than 20%. A lot of the users are parents, so even though their kids are not using, they're being affected by it. All for God save the state of West Virginia and the Solomon Court. Everybody here knows about Judge Thompson's drug court. It's where you go if you're ready to get clean and you don't want to go to jail. I always worry about losing my community. But I can tell you how we are trying to fix it. And we're trying to fix it one person at a time. Trying to get folks like John Russell back on track. John is cleaning up the town riverbank, part of the community service Judge Thompson requires as part of his drug court. How long we've known each other? I was 13. I was one of the first students to start drug court. I got caught in marijuana at, at school. He said, you're, you're too, too bright of a, of a kid to be doing stuff like this. He said, I can see good things in your future, and that's all he stuck with me. It'd be easy to give up on these people. The easiest thing I could do when someone comes before me uh, with a criminal charge and they're found guilty of it is to put them in jail or prison. Here's how his drug court works. You gotta show up for weekly court appearances, get counseling, submit to random drug tests, and do community service. Judge Thompson and his team track everybody's progress. He's going to the adult learning center three times a week. Good deal for John. When we were first there, John was like an A student. I'm gonna give you a gold star this week. You're doing great. Good deal. There's not too many judges that give you chance after chance after chance. They just wash their hands of you and send you to prison. He don't. He cares. You saved my life and got my family back. Uh, my interactions with the people in drug court, it's almost a parent-child relationship. You think of it on its most basic scale is they want to please the court or they want to please their dad. 
But some days, the judge's goal of rebuilding his community one person at a time isn't easy. I have before me a failed drug screen that someone did not admit to. Your cardinal rule here, honesty. You gotta be honest. If you cannot recover if you're not honest with yourself first. And honest with you, the judge. And honest with me. The first time you were in front of Judge Thompson, you lied. Yeah, I did. Did he see right through it? I believe so. I was an evil person. I was uh, not trustworthy. I would walk in to like a family event and I would already be eyeballing what I could take. What uh, you could steal? Yeah. If there was anything out in the open that I could get away with, things of that nature. My mind stayed on where I was getting my next fix. I didn't care who was in my way to get it, whether it was um, my boyfriend, whether it was um, you know, my son's birthday money. It, it never made a difference to me. In 2015, I, uh, miraculously landed a job with the United States Postal Service. Um, I went through training and uh, I got hired on at the post office down the road here. Um, my habit became so out of control at that time that I ended up embezzling about $8,000 from them. I ended up losing my job <clears throat> and got criminal charges of embezzlement. Here's the other thing about Mallory. She's a mom like me. Back when she was using, she lost custody of her little boy, Jackson. Is it hard to see his room every day? I, I don't come in here unless I have to. We're not going to get to the bottom of this unless we do grassroots community engagement. The Boone County Opioid Network, where community leaders like Dreama Mace are trying to find solutions to the opioid crisis here. Judge Thompson was there, so was Rachel Waters. They know each other. Well, he was my judge when I went to court. Both of my parents was there, and I remember he <laughs> made me turn around and look at my parents. And I don't remember what you had me say to them. I think I had but... to describe what it means to shoot up. And I think a lot of parents want to think that their son or daughter sitting up there, well, they just took a few too many pills. You know, they doubled their prescription up. That's not what they did. They took those pills, melted them down, and injected it into a needle and then injected it into their body. And I want them to hear the actual grim total reality of what their son or daughter did. Because we have a lot of parents who love their children but are also enablers who want to, don't want to recognize what type of problem that their kid has. I mean, it got to where there were times, like after I sold my car, that I begged mom to take me to get get drugs. And this is how bad, just, you know, that it was. Like, I was so sick, like, we would go get drugs or whatever. And one, the one, one day, I remember, like, I just got everything out and shot up with her driving me in the car, like, right there. That was, like, a really bad, I just, I mean, I couldn't believe I'd done that, but I was just sick, and I was like, I'm not waiting until we get home. Yes, that was awful. I couldn't believe that she was doing what she was doing, and I couldn't believe I was with her. It's so easy to say, well, I wouldn't do that, or I would do this, or I wouldn't do that. You really don't know what you will do till you get there. With gritty determination, Rachel got healthy. She has a job she loves now. She gets along with her mom and family again. Tonight, she's watching her nephew head off to the prom the social event of the year at Scott High School. There's not a lot for kids to do in Boone County. The movie theater, the pool, they're gone. But baseball still draws a crowd. Go to, go to, go to, go to. That's Judge Thompson coaching his son, Will, one of his four children. But it's hard for him to leave behind what he sees in the courtroom every day. The hardest thing I have to take home with me is um, children and the fact they're not being taken care of, and the fact they're not getting a chance in life. Kids like Kirsten and Tyler Bowman. I met with them on a hot day at the high school fields. These kids have been through a lot. Their dad is in prison for dealing drugs. Their mom and half-sister died four years ago in a fiery car wreck after mom had an all-day drug binge. Even though I know my dad and most of my family 
focus on that stuff, you, I could still tell that, you know, they try and that they do actually care and love for us. They just, you know, need help to get off of it. They love you a lot, but they're dependent on this substance, right? Yeah. How did you keep going? Um, I don't know. For a little while, I didn't want to. So you got any hot plans for the weekend? No. No? Scott Briscoe is Kirsten and Tyler's court-appointed attorney. He's really struggling to keep up with the caseload. 21 years ago, when I started practicing child abuse and neglect uh, and representing children, we did roughly five of these cases a week. Flash forward to now, and we're doing over 40. A week? A week. And how much of it is related to drugs? I would say 99.99% of it is related to drugs. Kirsten and Tyler were shuffled around for months between relatives and shelters. Tyler told me he spent most of his free time just walking around town until Judge Thompson figured out a way for them to live with their dad's girlfriend. The judge brings Scott and Kirsten to court every week just to check in. Tyler said one of the best things that's happened to him was you. I love him. He's a good kid. You worried about him? Yeah, every day. There's so many kids over the years, I, I thought, that's one I could take home. Um, that's one that maybe I could bring home and rescue. You're making a difference. I try. That's all we can do, right? You working hard today? Carrie Dolan is trying, too, taking part in drug court, working as a manager at a local restaurant. And paying it forward, she hired John. John is a great worker. He just needed a chance. He needed a chance to get back out there. And once you've been where John and I have been, it's hard to get a job. It's hard to find somebody to even let you in the, in the door. But once you get that chance, that's all you need. And in no time, John had opened his first bank account and started to dream big. Well, my dream is to be an architect. And build buildings or even bridges. You know, I, I want to be a part of something good like that. Plus it's good money. But just a few weeks after we met John, things weren't going so well. He was back in court in an orange jumpsuit and shackles after violating his parole. Still sober. Still sober. Still right. sober. The judge warned John he was running out of options. But instead of sending him back to jail, Judge Thompson found a place in West Virginia where John can get some vocational training. Sometimes it's a third chance. Sometimes it's an 18th chance at life. But I don't like to give up on people. Uh, I like to give people a chance um, to fix themselves. Drug court graduation day for Carrie and Mallory. Judge Thompson and drug court saved my life. Without a doubt, saved my life. All right. uh, I was a heroin addict. I had open heart surgery um, at 36 years old. Um, I had lost my son. I only got to see him with supervision. And now I see him when I want to. Um, he saved my life. Of all the people I met in Boone County, Mallory's story is the biggest turnaround. Days like this makes me think that what we're doing is worth it. Congratulations. Uh, very, very proud of Mallory. Everybody give Mallory a round of applause. He cared about me an awful lot. He uh, gave me a chance that he didn't have to give me. And what did that do for you? He gave me my life back. Not only is Mallory working again, she's working for the same public defender's office that once defended her as a recovery coach. She told me her biggest goal now is getting joint custody of her son. In 10 years, he's graduated 50 people in Boone County. You could be working in a big city as a lawyer. Why are you here? I wanted to make my home a better place and I'm doing everything in my power to save it. They're people. They're no different than any other person. They just happen to suffer from addiction. What I want you to do is not only for you to stay clean, but I want you to help other people get clean. That's very, very important. We can beat this as a community. Our community can come back, but in order for that to happen, we have to all work together.
Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.